What is going on? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. Tens, tens, tens across the board this weekend. Let's get into it. So on Saturday afternoon, Collingwood took on Port Adelaide at the MCG and we won. Can you believe it? 10 wins in a row. It is crazy. So the last time this happened, I think was either 2011 or, or, or 2012. Um, I'm pretty sure it was 2011 last time this happened. Um, no, it was. It was It was 2012. It was 2012, yep. Because um, it was Buckley's first year in charge. Uh, and we had just come off a grand final. Now, that that's cool, you know. Buckley's first year in charge. Uh, I think we won 11, 12 games in a row or something. Um, but the year before that, we played off in a grand final against Geelong. The year before that, we won a grand final. We have got 10 wins in a row now. Uh, and the year before, we finished 17th on the ladder. It is just mind-blowing that, you know, we are producing this sort of just excitement and, and, and generating these wins. Last year, we had six wins. A lot of media pundits had us bottom four, wooden spoon, winning only a handful of games. Not really anyone had us in the finals. Not even I had us in the finals. All I wanted to do this year was win more than six games, play some exciting fast attacking brand of football and look to the future a little bit. We've done all of those things. Uh, games are exciting. We are taking the game on. We got a never say die spirit. Everything. Everything is just near perfect uh, for Collingwood this season. And you know, that's where these 10 wins comes from. It comes from the belief uh, that Craig and all the coaches have instilled in this club. And I just I just can't speak highly enough of him and the other coaches. It's just uh, 10, 10 wins in a row. I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind. It, it's so freaking good. So now let's talk about the game. We started off really, look, I, I use harsh words on Twitter because in the moment, you know, that's, that's how you're feeling and stuff. And I think I dropped the word pathetic maybe. I think we're, we're getting, um, we're getting outclassed by Port Adelaide. They were playing the game that we would play, um, which saw them kick six goals in that first quarter. Yes, you know, we did. I think we ended up kicking four goals in that, in that first quarter as well. So it wasn't like we went goalless or anything. There was just a couple of efforts, um, defensive efforts and stuff like that, that we are usually better in. And so when you set yourself such a high standard, when you don't hit that, you look and go, oh, that was crap, that was shit ass, blah, 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 blah. Um, but the guys turned it around in that second quarter where we kept uh, Port Adelaide goalless, kicked a few goals ourselves, played that more Collingwood brand of football, and that kind of led on through the rest of the game. Now, going into the third quarter, our last three games, so probably for the last month or so, we haven't led going into the fourth quarter. So every so for the last three or four rounds, uh, at the end of the third quarter, we've been in a losing position. This was the first time where we've been in a winning position, so it was more, uh, it was a bit of a different scenario. Now it was kick another winning margin to win, um, don't be comfortable where you are, and then hold the lead as well. And holding the lead is what we didn't do. I thought, you know, I think we're up by 20 something points, and I thought, okay, we're going to be cruisy here. This is going to be like a 30, 40 point win if we really put our foot down. And then all of a sudden, Things start going for Adelaide's way. They get one or two contentious free kicks. Um, they kick goals. And it starts building momentum. We win by six points. So there is some things. Even though it was a great win and we showed signs that we can come out and, you know, and hurt teams, there are just little lapses of football where we can get better at. And we will get better at because the, the beauty about it is we get to play next week or this Friday – uh, against Melbourne, so those little things you tweak and you get better at, and you know you implement them into the next game. So I wouldn't be too worried about that, but you know, being a certain number of goals up, you kind of want to put the game to rest, and you kind of you don't want to you don't want another close win. But it is what it is. Ten wins in a row is just again incredible. Uh, just on individual performances, Josh Dacos had another very, very good game and putting in a strong case to be a true wingman in the All-Australian team. Even if he gets into the um, the 40 squad, it's just huge. Because I, I remember a couple of years ago where we all thought Josh Dacos probably wasn't going to make it. And I thought, okay, 
if it by the end of this year, if he, if he you know he's not getting regular game time, not improving, he was probably going to get delisted or, or moved on. He just had that sort of feeling, blew it away, and now we are reaping um, the benefits of that because yes, Nick Dacos gets all, all the spotlight, but. Josh is just in there working hard. 26 disposals, 9 contested possessions, 10, uh, sorry, 3 tackles, you know, and 3 three clearances, uh, a couple of rebounds, and a couple of inside 50s as well. A very, very good outing for uh, Joshy D. Another guy who made his return, Jordan Dugowie. Very, very rusty. I think he went at about 50% disposal efficiency from 23 disposals, but he did have 13 contested possessions. He kicked 2 goals, 1. Again, another tweet to... Um, uh, at, at about halfway through the first quarter, I said something like, Dugowie is the done with the pies or something like that. Because, maybe not the done with the pies, but like, just it just didn't look like his heart was in it for, for, for that half of the game or half of that quarter. Because he was just half arsing um, contest disposals was very rusty. A couple of turnovers, clangers and stuff like that. But as the game went on, he kicked that goal in the um, at the end of that first quarter. As the game went on, he got better and better and better. Disposals still were a little bit rusty, but look, 13 contested possessions, uh, what is that, two tackles, uh, six clearances, I think, seven score involvements, two goals, five clearances, so he's going to be a big catalyst if we are to go deep into finals, or even just win a final, uh, it's going to be Jordan Dugowie, because he's just, we can see how powerful he is, he's shown it uh, on the weekend as well, he, he, needs, he needs to be up and firing, if we're to go on and do some damage in September. A couple of other guys, Darcy Cameron did a lot of things right, played a little bit of himself back into form, which, you know, helps when, De, uh, when I was going to say De Grundy, when Grundy is probably coming back against Melbourne. Um, Cameron, what I love about Cameron is he can take a really good contested mark and go into the back line and do it as well. Again, oh my God, all tweets. Tweeted that um, maybe we should chuck Cameron uh, down back as not a full back, as just like a floating backman who can stand under those marks and, and take a good contested mark, especially with Jeremy Howe out. Could be a weird option. They won't do it, but, you know, you just throw darts at a, at a board and something's going to stick, you know what I mean? It would be remiss of me if I didn't talk about the umpiring that I thought, and a lot of you guys thought as well, was absolutely atrocious. My dad called me after the game and we had a chat because he couldn't come. Um, and he's like, Luke, he goes, I had to turn it off at one stage because... The umpiring was that bad, and it was ridiculous. Like, look, you'll probably look at, I think we won the free kick count, but it's not that. Like, you can't rely on, oh, you got 15 free kicks and they got 11. They're like, oh, you won the free kick count. How are you complaining? It was the things that they missed. A bunch of holdings against um, Ash Johnson. Ginevan is getting the raw end of the stick. Wh whatever umpiring decision it is. A high, or it was there was another holding uh, of Ginevan when he didn't have the ball. Um, just heaps, he and it's just frustrating because things that they were doing to us weren't getting paid, but then we would do the exact same thing and they were getting paid, which is fair enough because they need to get paid. But it's just frustrating when it's like you know, it just it just feels like, and it might be that just the Collingwood uh, supporter room, but it just feels like there's a really big bias against Collingwood um, with these umpires and not only do you have to beat the team in front of you, you got to beat these yellow guys as well and um, yeah, it's just, it's frustrating and you know, <sighs> that's all I'm going to say. It's just really frustrating and someone, someone has to come uh, from the club and, and speak out because it's, it's crap at this point. It's really, really bad at this point. Also, before I forget, this team, I said, uh, the belief and everything that they've got. I want to shout out Trent Bianca because in that first quarter, he started really poorly. And I thought, oh, he had such a good game last week and now he's starting off poorly like uh, like this. He just really came into the game 100% um, committed, hitting uh, hitting targets and stuff like that uh, in the last three quarters. Uh, there was a contest where he kind of just, I think he went back with the flight of it or, or something like that. And that was good as well. Um I think he's going to be a, a real star, and I thought he wasn't going to, kind of like the Josh Dacos a couple of years ago, I thought he wasn't going to make it, but these last two games have proven that, yeah, this guy could be a mainstay in that, um, in in our best 22, along with Josh Carmichael, who will probably come on for um, an injured Taylor Adams who did his groin, so Taylor Adams comes out, Josh Carmichael probably uh, comes in. But anyway, guys, this has just been my review of the Collingwood Port Adelaide game. 
My vlog will be dropping tomorrow, and then I think the next day after that, my preview for the uh, Melbourne game will drop as well. But until then, make sure you go to the links down below for all the merch, the Jamie Elliott uh, t-shirt up on the CarltonDrive.com. These awesome Swoop Luke hats, um, they're selling quick, so go in and, and, and grab some. Setting a bunch more out this week. But until then, like, comment, subscribe, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets, and until next time, double shackers. I'll sweep you later.